I really recommend using Fujifilm's XRAW Studio for this entire process. It's going to make it a whole lot easier for you. I mean, you could do it on the uh, back of your camera's screen by fumbling through all the buttons and, and trying to figure out on that little tiny screen uh, what each one of these settings are going to do. But if you have a computer and you have a way to connect your camera to your computer, I would really recommend using this method. And we're gonna learn all about how to use XRAW Studio in this video. XRAW Studio is a very underutilized but free program from Fujifilm that's available for both Mac and PC users. What's cool about it is that it allows you to access your camera's RAW converter, but through your computer. So if you've ever tried to use the Q button to process photos that you've recorded, where you can change the film simulation and the toning and the color after you have created an image processing it in camera, that can be pretty tedious trying to manipulate all the little buttons and trying to see what all the differences are doing on that little screen. With XRAW Studio, you can do all of that on your computer with your mouse and that large computer screen. The only downside of it is you need to have the same camera model that was used to create the RAW files that you're working with. So if you have a collection of RAW files from an X-T2, you need an X-T2 available to plug into your computer because the program uses that RAW converter directly from your camera it doesn't make a copy of it onto the computer. So if you don't have it already, head on over to the Fujifilm website to download it. There's a link in the notes for this video. If you have any problems installing it, Fujifilm does have some pretty good detailed instructions about how to install it. Prior to using XRAW Studio with your camera, you need to go into the setup menu and set your connection mode to USB RAW conversion. All those other modes, USB card reader, tethered shooting, none of them will work if you have XRAW Studio connected to your computer. It has to be USB RAW conversion. The other thing that you need to do on new cameras is turn off the USB power supply setting. Now I had this on because I wanted to charge my batteries while I was doing tethered shooting. However, I noticed a problem when I was using XRAW Studio. It was just acting really, really slow. It would freeze up. I would have to restart the program, turn off my camera and all these things until I figured out that once I turned off the USB power supply setting, it worked just fine. I guess it can't charge and do the data transfer at the same time. This is what XRAW Studio looks like when you first open it up and have your camera connected to your computer. You'll see the camera on the upper left-hand side with the firmware version and the battery level. If that's missing, your camera is not connected. There are four panels to be familiar with in XRAW Studio. The panel on the left, um, at the top, like we said, you'll see your camera model. You have your folder explorer here. Wherever you store your RAW files that you want to experiment with, you can navigate to them here. Underneath that is some basic image info. You'll have your histogram, and all of the metadata attached to that photo, including the image quality settings that were used when that photo was captured. On the bottom is your film strip where you can filter images by displaying certain file types, sort them by uh, date. Um, you can rate them. I can press the number three on my keyboard and assign this a star rating of three or five or zero to go back to zero stars. And you can also choose to sort files by only showing the types of files that are compatible with the camera that's plugged in. Remember, you need to have uh, the camera that was used to create those raw files uh, connected to the computer in order to edit them. So you can do that with this uh, icon right here, list target file only. So that will only show you the files that are compatible with the X-T4, which I have plugged in right now. In the center here, this is your image preview window. You can select a, a full screen image preview. You can do some before and after editing where you have your before on the left and then any changes you make to it on the right will show up on the right side. You can also zoom in, pan around the images using the tools on the upper right hand side here with the different zoom levels 
or the magnifying glasses or the little hand to pan around. And then on the right side, you will see your profile. On the newer cameras, it will show you the custom settings that are saved in the camera that you have connected to the computer. Older cameras won't have that. It will only show you the user profile uh, bar up here where you can see the profiles that you've saved into XRAW Studio. Now below that, this is where your image quality settings are. We're gonna be spending a lot of time here. Um, this is what we're going to use to come up with our custom settings. And this is going to vary from camera to camera. This is an X-T4 right here. All of these options are what you'll see in an X-T4. There's gonna be another demonstration later where I have an X-T2 plugged in, and we only have like half of these options. Um, so that's gonna vary by camera, but that's what we're mostly going to be using to come up with all of our different custom settings. And in order to work on these custom settings, you're going to need a selection of RAW files. If you already have a bunch of RAW files and you have the camera, at least the model camera that was used to create those RAW files, that's great. If you don't have any RAW files, you're going to need to go out and get some. So get a wide variety of images. If you want custom settings that you're going to use for landscapes, get a variety of landscapes. Landscapes that were taken on sunny days in the middle of the day landscapes that were taken under overcast skies, uh, maybe some that are taken under a forest canopy, but get a variety. And you're gonna want to have as much variety possible in order to get the most accurate custom settings that you can. So if you don't have it already, go into your camera's image quality setting menu and set your image quality to either raw or raw plus fine to get the raw plus the JPEG file. But you'll need the raw files to work in this program. And then once I pick which photos that I wanna work with, I put them in an easy to find folder on my desktop. I don't wanna to have to go searching through this massive folder hierarchy in order to find photos that I wanna work with. So I've just created a folder on my desktop where I have copied photos from these different camera models and put them in a folder specific to that camera, which makes this whole process um, a lot easier and a lot more organized. So if you don't have any raw files to work with, go out and get some and we'll see you when you come back.